I know I'm coming on, coinciding with the start of the Arkansas Ole Miss Diamond Hawks baseball game tonight. Uh, but I need to get this in. I want to get it in in a fairly good hour here uh, instead of going late like I've been doing some. Uh, but thank you for joining me. Big news day today. I think it's there's been a calm before the storm when you looked at yesterday flowing into today. You know, and it was one of those things where it was inevitable that Eric Melsman, Eric Patrick Melsman would be the new head coach at USC. It was a matter of time before the announcement. It was getting information throughout the day. Not, and, and I put some of this on hogville.net, the fact that, you know, staff members were informed uh, within the athletics department uh, that, that uh, Musk was accepting the job or had accepted it. Uh, actually, that happened, started happening last night uh, with some of the players and whatnot. Um, you know, a guy like Ronnie Bird Jr., who I think the world of, I mentioned in the same post on hogville.net that, that he's a guy that's going to be the anchor man. He's going to be holding the fort down pending a hire. And then I hope like heck he's retained, but we'll see. New coach is going to do what he wants to do, needs to do. But I'm, you know, I think Ronnie's going to do a great job with contacts they've made in recruiting, guys who are in the portal from Arkansas. Two more today. We're going to talk about that. Now a total of seven. Could there be a way to back for some of these guys? And so you've got to have somebody like a Ronnie Brewer Jr. in place uh, to, to kind of keep things. This is what Scotty Thurman did, by the way, five years ago when he was an assistant coach for Mike Anderson, Mike Anderson let go, Thurman stayed back and actually helped Eric Melsman iron things out. Thank you, Kevin, for all your reporting. You've been spot on with everything. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that compliment. Look, there, I got detractors out here. Most people understand it. They get it. Most people didn't really know what was going on. Maybe they didn't know whether to trust my reporting. I typically deliver pretty much spot on. Uh, and I'm not saying that to be a pat myself on the back, but that's the track record. We can talk about records. That's the, that's the track record. The point is, is that there's only so much I can say, but I gave you the, the broad strokes that really matter. Guys looking for a job for a long time, consistent drumbeat. I never wavered on that. And then I thought he'd likely go because at some point, something's going to work itself out for him on one of the jobs he wants, not being on a hot seat. So he can be a little selective there, right? That, that it, something would come that he'd go to. And when I knew what those were, I kind of slow dripped some of those destinations recently over the last few weeks because I had sources ask me not to, even though some of it was already out there. Um, and, and, and this is, this is the result. Uh, there are some of my detractors think that, that there are some that think that I made this happen, that I, me conspiring with a group of people drove him out. It just doesn't work that way. He, Eric, Eric Patrick Melsman's not making decisions based on my re accurate reporting on the fact that he's been looking to go for months. This is not something that blew up here at the end just because many of you only started seeing things here toward the end, like the videos put out by Hunter Yurchuk, which, by the way, if this, if this next hire is as big of a splash as I think it can be, will, will look pretty ballsy, even though at the time it was awkward and not not that cutting edge, using old film footage, a weird, uh, you know, uh, podcast interview, you know. So it wasn't sharp in that sense from optics, but the end result, remember I always talk about process and results. That's part of his process. Let's pay attention to the result and then we'll judge the little breadcrumb trail that he was giving us. I've been giving you breadcrumb trail the whole time, pretty forward stuff, more than just breadcrumbs. Stuff that was driving you to this was coming. Th this is coming, and it did. Now, I didn't know exactly where it would land because I'll remember, I've told you, there was some stuff with the, with the search committee stuff where they really dig down deep and do their homework, and some of that stuff was hurting him and some of these opportunities he was open to. I wasn't sure, could this be a situation where the stuff he'd like, they all say no, and then what? And Hunter Yurchek helped answer that with some of the stuff he was doing. There was no pathway back, and that probably helped EPM get to the place where he got. If, if there was any doubt for him, it made it harder for any any kind of a way back. So, you know, if 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 um, if, if folks get mad because they, they, they want to be in a, they want to be in an end result camp. It's either going to be this or that. And if you don't say one exactly like it's going to happen and when it's going to happen and where he's going to go, then you didn't know anything. Really? Come on, grow up. Look, I'm going to say this. I tweeted it out earlier. I put my article out. I tweeted out that I had it, that he was leaving. Some of the national guys uh, were putting it out on their Twitter. Uh, I had an article go out. And as soon as I wrapped those things up, I, uh, 
Eric, Eric, P, Eric Patrick Meltzman and I had a nice exchange. Had a nice exchange. And I'm not going to go into the details of that. I'm not going to tell you exactly what was said, but it was really nice. It was good. It was positive. All right? I haven't always been positive talking about this because there's been some real problems up there, and a lot of that's at his feet. And he knows I have a job to do. He understands that. Over these last five years, it, you know, we, we there were a few times where, where these conversations were had. Just last month, I had a conversation with Eric Patrick Melsman, and I told him what I was reporting. He knew it was out there already, but I made sure that he understood this is what I've got to do. I've got to do the job. I, I'm not going to troll the fan base. I don't shill for an individual. It's about the fan base and the Razorbacks, not anybody else. He understood that. He understood I have a job to do. He didn't give me great pushback when I told him what I was hearing, where I was coming from, because he knew it was solid sound and it would be a futile effort to do that. Not a lot of pushback, barely any. Wasn't even a concern. Now, these last two months, have been really a lot of stuff flying around. Um, and I know for him <laughs> trying to get out, uh, I'm sure my drumbeat of constantly reporting it got to him. I know it did, all right? At the end of the day, when the dust settles, there was respect between two men, you know, basically saying goodbye, good luck to you. And, uh, you know, a thank you on the, on the other end of it and some stuff like that. So I'm not gonna go into the real heart of it uh, but that was the bottom line there. And so I'm not going to spend more any more time on that other than to say um, Arkansas, when you look at this coaching hire and you go back and look at what Hunter Yurchek was doing with the videos and stuff I've been getting from behind the scenes for a while that he's ready. He's ready. We'll see how ready he is. The biggest name out there, the one I've been told to focus on is Chris Beard. There's been a lot of information pouring in. I'm trying to keep up with it all. I'm trying to vet sources. I'm trying to drill down on what's consistent, what's not, what overlaps, what doesn't, what contradicts, what doesn't. Um, and I really believe that he's the first name on the board today, just like I did before. If I believe everything I'm told, <laughs> there are a few things that can, that conflict a little bit, but, but I think Arkansas... Uh, because sources on the other side of things over the last several weeks, even months, had told me, always said, this guy would be interested. Even when the announced extension came with Ole Miss or, or, uh, last month, that didn't change that. I'm told there, there are folks here in central Arkansas from his time at Little Rock, big money folks that have been really a part of what happens good at the at, uh, Arkansas Razorbacks Athletics over the years, might just step up to make, help make that happen. So we'll see, we'll see where that goes. Um, um, but I, you know, he's on the leaderboard in my opinion, based on where they'd start, where they probably has, where Hunter Yurichek probably has started um, and, and where that would go. Now, remember I've been talking a lot about process and results. I've talked a lot about that. A lot of the stuff I gave you guys, I sat on for a while. So it wasn't real time by the time you got it, but it feels like it when you're receiving it that way, because you're just now hearing it but some stuff's already kind of worked out and been going on for a while. Same thing here. If I believe Chris Beard's in the, in the at the forefront, your check's been on this for weeks at minimum, and I don't know for a fact, since I can't confirm everything right now, that 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 maybe he hasn't ha you know, maybe there's a, a a situation that's come up where he's had to move on to who else is in the on the on the short on the short list after Beard, which I've been telling you guys is Will Wade and Jerome Tang, those two names. So I'm not 100% convinced that that Juracek hasn't had to move on to something else. But everything I'm hearing is a ton of momentum that's, that's telling me Chris Beard's in play, that they think they can maybe get that done. Um, and so we'll see. We'll see. I think those are the, still the three names at the top. There are a few more. Some of them are surprised. Some of them some of them were DMing me today. What's going on? Head coaches, okay? Division one. Let it sink in right now that Arkansas, I mean, I'm not talking down anybody, but it's hard to transition. Everybody's been so tied up with what, what the drama between Eurocheck, EPM, 
and how this was going to play out. It just got announced today. Everybody could really the last 24, 48 hours, uh, 72 hours, whenever you started locking in, figured out this was probably heading that way. But now you've got to really focus on what's next. You got to really shift it, you know, say goodbye. It's kind of like, we, you, well, we won that game. Uh, we'll sleep and celebrate tonight. And then we got to focus on the next. You know, it's kind of, you know, it's a corny cliche, but the point is, I think now we're really cluing in and locking in on what's next. I'm getting all kinds of stuff. Look, the, the player I have not named who's been committed, unnamed, un, not publicly, he's still been asked to hold on. I can tell you that Bay Fall, who went in the portal today, the 6'11 freshman, former McDonald's All-American, he's been asked to hang on. Let's see what happens. He's in the portal, but I think the idea is, let's see who they get. If you're asking guys to hang on, Think about it. If you're anybody is asking these guys to hang on coming from the University of Arkansas, they, they can't be asking kids to hang on if they don't feel com comfortably good about having something they're ready to get done soon. And we're in a dead period right now. It started today. It ends on the 11th next week. So that's, you know, I think uh, after Mike Anderson left, I think it was about a two-week process before Mosman came. I got to go back and look at it. It may have been longer than that. I, I should have checked that before I came on. I don't want to misspeak. It seemed longer than it was. Maybe it was longer than that. Whatever it was, it felt double the, than what it actually was. So each day may go by slowly when you want news. If they pop it fast, wow, lucky, lucky all of us. If they don't, just hang in there a little bit, just like they're telling the recruits. And if you're asking recruits to hang in there, if you're asking your current players in the portal to hang in there, I've talked about it. There's seven in the portal now. Caleb Battle's another one that went in. But but Bay Fall is a guy that has, I know, I've confirmed this before I came on, has been asked just to hang out a little bit. Uh, do I think Battle will follow Muss? I'm reading a comment here. Um, I have no idea. Maybe. Maybe. Is there anyone recruiting for Arkansas? Yeah, it's, it's Ronnie Brewer Jr., Ronnie Brewer on the staff, recruiting coordinator, assistant coach, is holding the fort down. Um, and I've, and I've had conversations with him today. Uh, and so we'll see what, we'll, you know, we'll see what, you know, again, this was a role Scotty Thurman had five years ago, it, you know, in that middle land, no man's land, we're going from one staff, waiting on another to come in. And he's, and he stuck with Musk for a while helping him, uh, and, and was not retained. Um, since when is battle a Musk fan? Since he got opportunities to go bus 42 and 30 plus and green him, I mean, it didn't, it didn't translate into really into beating anybody that was good, but Arkansas showed some improvement on offense. And I mean, I don't, I mean, you know, I don't know how, how, how much their dynamics truly shifted. Uh, somebody cussed him out a few weeks. Oh, battle. So, the point is, is that if you're asking recruits, whether from your team or, you know, to me now, everybody's a recruit, even current players, whether they're in the portal or not, because you've got to recruit to retain them. Even if EPM was coming back, he, he's had to do that, try that every year. Uh, so that's part of recruiting, retention. Guys you've already been working on and talking to. I think, you know, I think when you look at some in-state kids that are in the portal um, and then got, and then expand that out, some of the coaches that are on Arkansas shortlist are recruiting some of the same guys that Eric Patrick, Patrick Melsman and his staff were recruiting out of the portal. So some work's already been done selling the university. And now it's a matter of a tug of war. If Eric Patrick Melsman's trying to recruit some of these guys to USC and a new coach comes in, hopefully quickly and saying, yeah, they started selling you also on Arkansas, not just the coaching staff. And we're a staff that we can sell you on too, get you here and show you success. Get you NIL. That's another big part of this. NIL is another big, obviously. That's obvious. NIL is going to be a big section. People keep asking me why, why Eric Mosman has wanted out for over a year. I've reported going back to year two each year. And I've told, and I've said in recent, when we sat down and done some of this, I've said it's, people want to think that there's something wrong. Well, sometimes Guys are rolling stones. They don't stay very long in one place. This was never a guy that was hired in here to think that he was going to, you know, this was going to be the end all be all in the final destination. That's a huge part of it. That's a huge part of it. And so it, Eric Melsman had a lot of success at Arkansas, but at the same time he was efforting to go. 
the first, the last, the previous three years, it was just one, you know, it was basically focusing on one job that he'd like that he didn't get. And so, you know, things didn't get out wildly about that. And he's still doing his job, right? He's still doing his job. This was different. This was him casting a wide net to be recruited. Like he's, uh, he's basically saying, I'm in the portal, come recruit me. And he starts putting this stuff out based on my sources early in the year, if not back going back to the summer, I have different sources that give me different timelines, but they all come together about the same jobs he's interested in, uh, about the fact that it's been going on for a while. It certainly was going on before the season was shot, which tells you it's not just about a bad season and people being sour on him or trying to run him out or this and that. And there were issues behind the doors because of his process with assistant coaches, players, that was going on. A lot of it was going on even when they were still finding ways to have success. Um, and, you know, they call that, in, in, I guess, in, in corporate back in the 90s, I don't know if they use these phrases anymore, but they called it storming and norming, where you, you have a lot of storms and you figure out how to work together, get on the same page, work well together, and you just make it normal and you make a process that works. Some of that goes on in, in, in basketball, obviously. Some things aren't exactly what you think, you know, and it's, and, and there's only so much I'm going to be able to share through a pro, you know, while it's all playing out because I'm not going to be a disruptor. I'm going to let coaches and players and stuff like that figured out, do their job. And if we get to a point where it's obvious that someone's trying to get out and it could be hurting the season or it could be hurting players. I even waited until there was no at large opportunity before I started dr steady drumbeat. I wanted the fan base. I'm not shilling for anybody and covering for them. I'm not, I'm not. And it doesn't mean that I hate the guy and it doesn't mean that I can't have respect for his accomplishments and how good he has been as a coach in so many ways and how he's helped players just by association and NBA terminology, helping them learn and understand being connected on defense, things that worked really well up until this year. A lot of guys benefited from playing for Eric, Eric P. Musselman. They did. They had success together. But there's also issues there. I mean, and so it's fair to talk about those things. It's not, people want to have an all or nothing take. They want to be all or nothing. Either, either you're riding with somebody all the way. Look, I mean, I've got kids. I've got three kids. You know, I, I'm, in, I'm in their camp. They're, they're my people. But if they screw up, we're going to talk about it. I'm going to, be, I'm going to confront it. And, and, I, and, and they may not like the consequence, Right? Somehow we live in a world now, if you criticize or if you bring up valid stuff and it's not what people want to hear, and it, they can't accept that two things or three things or several things can be true at once and be coinciding. And then now it's an agenda. Now it's an agenda. And because there's a lot of folks that, that are in, I mean, you've got so-called media, you've got a lot of stuff on social media that, media that confuses people because it's, it's clickbait, it really is. Um, and I'll never, I just won't work that way. I'll never do that, never happen. I'll have fun on social media sometimes, but I'm not gonna talk about stuff like a, a, co a head coach at the University of Arkansas looking for other jobs, uh, you know, and just throw that out there see to see what sticks. I'm not gonna do that. I respect the work I do too much. I respect the fan base too much. It's just not going to happen. You deserve better than that. You deserve to know what's going on in your program. You don't need every little detail and minutia behind the scenes that, again, I, I, look, what, what I've given everybody is less than 1% of the stuff I've seen go down. A lot of it's good stuff, a lot of it not so good. And some of it will never see the light of day because I don't see a need. And we got to move on. I'd rather focus more time now on talking about the coaching certs uh, and also salute Eric Musselman and his results here. Eric Patrick Musselman, back-to-back -back Elite Eights, followed by a Sweet 16, four consecutive 21 seasons, three straight seasons of having a top 20 rated defense, which if you go back and look at analytics and teams that succeed in the NCAA tournament, yeah, there needs to be somewhat of a balance, but typically the teams that win championships are rated top 20, 20 25 in, in Defensive ratings and somewhere in the top 40 in offense. So to me, that tells me defense was a little more important. He knew that. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff this guy did that was really some some great wins at Bud Walton Arena. Great crowds. 
woke a sleeping giant and not only woke it up, but had it marching in March. Had that monster going. Give Eric Musselman credit. Give him his flowers. Give him his dues. There's a lot of flawed stuff with everybody, no matter how good they are, no matter how much of a genius they are. Some stuff just burns people and, and wears them down. And, 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 and there's all kinds of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. And at some point, things run their course. And how things are handled sometimes makes it only worse. And at some point, I don't care how good my working relationship is with anybody, I'm going to report what's going on when I think it's needed and necessary. Because, you know, I, I think the fan base deserves that. All right. And I'm no martyr. I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm doing the job. It's the job. Yeah. Wish Mus and his family best and move forward. F fans are now, I mean, you know, you know, I think Hunter Yurichek, uh handled things the right way for the most part. I'll be more convinced of that when I see what he does as a hire. If it's Chris Beard, I consider that a home run in terms of what the coach is as a coach. We know there was off the court stuff that ran him out of Texas. And there are some valid points about that. I'm not gonna go deep on that stuff other than, than to say, I respect universities that, that would not hire him or would wanna part ways with him. And I also respect universities that believe in second chances and not in that in that not every misstep, even though it misstep sounds like I'm 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 you know not giving its due what what might have happened there, but at the same time, it shouldn't be a death sentence in my opinion opinion, some things. People should be able to grow from that, learn from it, pay their dues, which he has. He got fired, other stuff, his reputation took hits. Um, and so I'm not a shill for anybody. I'll talk about valid points, and there's more than one way to look at it. There's not a exact right or wrong. People who have a problem with it, they're not wrong. It's valid. People who are willing to forgive and give another new opportunities and look at the positives and and move on, there's some validity there too, you know. So, but what I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. What I do want to spend a time on a lot of time on is Chris Beard at Little Rock took a team to the NCAA tournament round of 32 in his first season as a Division One head coach. 30 wins, did a great job here, made a lot of friends, made a lot of contacts throughout the state, recruiting contacts, donors with money, a lot of, a lot of good stuff. That Those feel-good vibes in central Arkansas are really running high right now. And so I'm still trying to figure out what's accurate in terms of a push to get him in. How, how serious is the information I've been getting for a while that he's really interested in the job? And, and, and you know, things can if, if, if things can be met, you know, one thing I'm told is, and I'm trying to figure this out, there's a number, there's a dollar figure out there for a salary. I won't say what it is, but I will say that it's more than Eric Patrick Melsman was making uh, in terms of maybe what it would take. And that was $4.245 million was what he left with or what he was making when he left, you know. So, you know, there's some stuff there. It's a guy that's a former Na Associated Press National Coach of the Year. Two-time Big 12 Coach of the Year. Sun Belt Coach of the Year in the one season uh, that he was at Little Rock. Made it to the national title game in, at Texas Tech in his five years there. Made it to an Elite Eight at Texas Tech while he was there. Has never lost an opening round game in the NCAA tournament in five trips there. Taken three different programs there. I mean, you talk about defense. We were talking about defense. At times has had what? Sometimes the top rated defense in college basketball and, you know, typically thought of as one of the, so it, it's not, you know, it's not something you can st sustain necessarily every year. And he's moved around here recently because of his situation that ran him out of Texas. Uh, but when you look at the short, I mean, he, this would be year 10 coming up for him when it, year 10 is coming up for him, whether he's at Ole Miss or Arkansas or something else that could happen for him. That's a hell of a track record for a guy that just wrapped up nine years in the game. You know, Eric Patrick Melsman just wrapped up his ninth year. He's done some great things. This guy's done more. He's done more. It's an upgrade if it happens, if it happens. You can determine that if you want to think that or not. I'm not telling you to think that it is. That's how I see it. It's my opinion. Okay, that's, that's, that's where it is. There's some other names on there. Will Wade, a very strong recruiter. A guy, you know, he made his strong-ass offers at LSU. 
Uh, he had success there. He didn't necessarily have the kind of instantly tournament success. Uh, what a great year he had at McNeese State. His first year there, 30-plus wins, talking about going to the mid-major level and, and banging it out. Uh, to me, he would be a solid hire. You know, Jerome Tang, strong basketball tree, Scott Drew at Baylor, strong recruiter, great first season at Kansas State, Elite Eight, had some stuff, player stuff going on that prohibited the that team being from as good as it could be, and what was a promising potential instantly tournament team didn't work out. Not a great, not a big body of work as a head coach at the big levels. Seeing some of the comments, they seem favorable right here for Beard. Look, those are the names. Those are the three names at the top. There are other names. Some of them might surprise you. I'm just going to have to hold on off on those right now. I have to. Other people are talking about some of them, by the way. Um, but, but I've been asked for a multitude of reasons because of some different dominoes or different things. And so, I, you know, um, for now, I will. Um, you know, there... Some of them are names that you're hearing, and, and I'm hearing some negative things on some of them. Familiar names we've heard in the past for this job, okay? Going back to the Mike Anderson time. So, you know, for now, I'm just going to, you know, kind of focus on these three. But I'm interested to hear from you guys. You know, I've, I'm hearing from fans the last several days about the names they like. I hear Will Wade a lot. Chris Beard more, but a lot of Will Wade. And I see the, the strengths in both. I haven't heard as much about Jerome Tang as far as fan interest. But I think that would be a solid option. Uh, Patrick, you call me Penny. Penny Hardaway, nah. Beard Wade, Shaka Smart's a name that a lot of folks are throwing around they'd like. There's, there's, you know, so. Oh, boy, I missed that one. Somebody was talking about Chris Beard. I missed it. 27 minutes in. Thank you for joining me on Hogville Net YouTube Live. want to thank my sponsors, Jose's Bar and Grill in Tawny Town, Doug Allen, the crew, great people. Wikipedia already has Chris Beard as the Arkansas head coach. Uh, Bucky McMillan is a, is a very, I mean, Samford, really. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, the thing about it is there's some fine, really good, hardworking uh, mid-major guys that are going to splash it somewhere. It, it's more of a risk for a problem like Ar a program like Arkansas. But if you go back historically, Eddie Sutton out of Creighton, Nolan Richardson out of Tulsa, we can go down the list. You know, Mike Anderson from out of from Missouri. But before that, we know he came from mid-major levels. Coach has got to start somewhere, right? Eric Mulsman out of Nevada, former NBA coach, but you know, in the college game, it's a different game. It's a whole different animal in so many ways. So he came from the mid-major levels. Arkansas had success doing that. Um, and, and you know, they haven't had some success with some guys. You know, um, Stan Heath and John Pelfrey. Sandwich in the middle of all those names I said. Is Arkansas's program and brand strong enough to lure a guy like Chris Beard and then they've got the resources not only to buy him out, not only to pay him, but to help him with an IL so he can succeed. The SEC's only going to get tougher. His former school, Texas, and OU come in, and what's already a, a strong league. It, 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 Will Wade's a guy that's navigated L, uh, SEC waters. Had success in the league. Not, you know, didn't do great in the NCAA tournament necessarily. Uh, had, a, had a run or two, um, and then had a great year at McNeese, McNeese State. So, again, I think – and he's a strong recruiter. He's a guy that I've told by many people that can – that has really good reputation with other coaches – and, and, and different recruiting mechanisms out there. We know NIL is going to play a part of it. Um, and a guy that can fundraise, a guy that can get people excited about a program. So, it, you know, and, and you know, we know he can raise funds. People are going to make jokes. It's a punchline, right? Strong ass offers and whatnot at LSU. But in this day and age of NIL, um, it's, it's kind of legal now. It's kind of okay, you know? And so, uh, you know, maybe, maybe people are able to, you know, that, that didn't like him then would be able to say, okay, well, that's the era we're in. He was a little ahead of his time. Let's move forward. He's a guy that because of his show cause will still have some recruiting off campus, recruiting restrictions in, in different pockets of time running through November uh, of this year. And so you keep an eye on that just because it, you know, when you're recruiting out of the portal, coaches are going on the road some, but they're also bringing players in doing stuff by zoom. You can have a staff, 
screw all the names except Beard. Okay, I read that for you, sir or ma'am. I can't. All right, 30 minutes in. I also want to thank Autograph, the new app, my new promo. Uh, go to the top of my Twitter slash X page uh, where I'm pr promoting the, the app. A lot of great Arkansas Razorbacks content. It's easy to set up. It's free. It's an app you can download. And on my where I've got it pinned on the top of my X Twitter page, uh, you can find the promo co code ARHS24 and a link to get it all set up. Please do that if you get a chance. I think you'll enjoy having that. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm always slow on the draw getting to that stuff. And I know folks are trying to watch the Diamond Hogs tonight, so maybe if, for those who can't join us now, if I'm talking to you, you'll never sit, hear this unless you watch later. So I hope you do watch later. And if you hear me say that, that I'm hoping you are. So wish granted, I don't know. Real time, present time, and then later and all that stuff can get me confused and put me in the twilight zone. Um, yeah, so, so these names, I mean, I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated by some of these guys because Arkansas under Eric Patrick Melsman competed against Will Wade. Musman came from LSU before Wade, right? Competed against Beard when he was at Texas Tech and knocked the Red Raiders out in the round of 32 when Arkansas went to the Sweet 16 in the first Elite Eight run. Lost to Texas in a, an exhibition game. I was there in Austin for that uh, season before last, preseason in October. Arkansas got, got ran out of the gym that day. Uh, so some of these names... We know about from college basketball, but there's been some cross, you know, there's been some intersection with the last regime, the last five-year era. Um, and so, you know, some of this gets interesting. I, you know, I, I go back to when Beard was in Little Rock. It's the most energized I've seen the fan base for the Trojans. I live here and I cover the Trojans every year. Daryl Walker's doing a great job, a great job. Uh, but, but going back to Beard, the excitement level was pretty high. And you got to understand that 30 wins. Uh, you know, won a conference title, won the conference tournament, upset Purdue uh, to get to the round of 32. So, you know, I think we're going to jump back to Eric Patrick Melsman for a little bit. I think there, the positives should outweigh a bad season and some of the stuff that's – some of the stuff I've dropped, and it's real and it's valid – and it's accurate, it's accurate reporting. And it is, a lot of it's based on source stuff, but a lot of it's, it's, the sources couldn't be any more credible. And a lot of the stuff, you know, um, I don't know how to exactly say it, was presented to the person we're talking about. And some of that stuff was sorted through in real time as we went along. And so it, it's just not something I'm getting to through second, third, and fourth parties. A lot of the stuff you get from me is about as close to the to the well as you can get, all right? And I'm not saying that to be what, – what I'm trying to tell you is this is not about agenda. It's about trying to get it out there and get it on the record. But I would say those things, those details, uh, you can get past now because he's gone, the bad stuff. And the good stuff is on the record. You live through it. You enjoyed it. You savored it. It was exciting. You hadn't felt that way in decades other than here and there, a little snippet here and there. But come on, man, that was a wave of success. That was a wave of success. It made Arkansas nationally relevant, and it's in the record book, so you'll always be able to look back on it. Uh, your your kids and, their, and your grandkids can go back and look at the archive footage like a lot of you do to see what they did live through the Eddie and Nolan days. Uh, so it's always there, man. It was a, it was a strong run. And so, you know, but, but the other stuff's valid too. And the other stuff was tough. It was tough and it came to a head and that, you know, part of it's a guy that just wants to move on. You don't fault him for that, but there was a lot of stuff going on that may have, have expedited a, a search that was going on through the season. I think it's very fair and valid. And I've brought it up. How did that impact the season? It was a bad year. How did this ongoing, not only stuff happened behind the scenes, but trying to go, how did it impact it? I think it's fair. I think it's fair to question that, to assume it had some kind of an impact, and then to have some disappointment. You don't have to be all or nothing. You don't have to hate a guy because some things were bad. You don't have to fully just, you know, 
bury your head in the sand either and say, well, I'm just going to only focus on the good stuff and the rest of it was BS. Someone's got an agenda. Someone's trying to run him out. No, it's not all or nothing. Multiple things can be true. At the end of the day, are you glass half full, glass half empty? Walk away from it and focus on the positive of how you want to remember that era because it was great. The on the court stuff was great in, in so many ways. The social media stuff was fun. It was better than most in college sports and other sports, you know, and so it got a lot of attention. Razorback fans like to be under the spotlight nationally in good ways. There was a lot of that. It was fun, you know, so at the end of the day, I think that is going to outweigh the other stuff. Um, some of the other stuff, though, whatever comes out, some of it's going to surprise some people and it may upset some some things, you know, so again... I, I I'll be one that looks at, at the at the run here and think that it was a great stretch in, in, in the history of the program. I don't see any other way to not come to that conclusion. But some will. Um, but but you know, and I don't want to sound preacher, tell people how to think. I'm just throwing out some stuff maybe to consider and then make your own decisions and make your own choices. Um, I think Arkansas again, uh, my impression is the young man that's a, a, a right has been a silent commit. Is 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 still he's he'd still like to come to Arkansas and he'd like to see who's hired. I, I mentioned the, uh, in our last podcast, the last time we did this, that I thought Layden Blocker would be a guy that's been real quiet on him. Uh, he could still talk to coaches, but there wouldn't be any visits during this dead period. And I think that's another guy to keep an eye on it, based on the hire. But depending on that, some of these names I've mentioned, some of these coaches, the programs they're at now have been recruiting him, trying to get him on their campus, trying to get him. Get him, get him to go. Uh, let's see about a Devo Davis. Again, I uh, said yesterday that that I, I don't think he and his camp had talked a lot about the what ifs with Musk seeming inevitable, inevitably moving on. Uh, but that that even might be something. Uh, Pinion's off to Arkansas State. Joseph Pinion, good for him. Success there this year uh, relative to what they've been able to do. Maybe he's a guy that can help them move the needle even more. Looking forward to seeing what Joseph Pinion does. Uh, you know, Denaje Harris, I wouldn't think would be somebody um, that would be coming back. I think he needs a waiver anyway to get another year. I don't know where he is in that process. Keon Minifield Jr. I mean, those were the names that went into the portal. Those are the players. Caleb Battle, we mentioned that. Uh, is there a path back for him? Maybe he would listen. You know, maybe he's following us. I don't know that. I don't have any intel on what he's going to do. Uh, but he's in the portal. And I thought it was interesting that he was in the portal. Uh, his timing with Musk, Eric Patrick Melsman moving on, his timing uh, is a little bit interesting. But also I thought that he might be one to test some kind of draft waters or put feelers out for pro opportunities. He doesn't have to put his name in the NBA draft pool necessarily to have back channels and other people checking on it, but it's the best way to get feedback and really – uh, give teams a reason to evaluate you and consider that maybe you're serious about coming. And I thought maybe he would do that. Maybe he will. Maybe he will, but we didn't see that today. So I wanted to talk about that just a little bit because it's interesting dynamics. You're in flux. People start to get nervous. They're like, okay, now what? Well, we're talking about some of these things. If a hire is made, let's say, if it happens by tomorrow and if something's announced before the weekend, I mean, and it's and it's one of these names you like, Hunter Juracek, kind of helps himself. He helped himself with the football situation a little bit by by getting Bobby Petrino back. It's not exactly please, pleasing to everyone, um, but, you know, there's a nugget of a win there for, at minimum. All right. But this one, he's got to land much better, in my opinion. And if he does announce somebody before the weekend and it's a big name and one you like, home run, A+. plus. Kudos to the two videos. Kudos to the two videos. Uh, if it's after the weekend, same thing. I mean, you're in the dead period anyway. If the Final Four is going on. All kinds of stuff's going on. This is March Madness. This is coach car coach season, carousel season. It, it's the portal. It's all of that. So you want to get your coach in as soon as possible. You want it to be something that just gives your program wings, man. It gets you soaring. You're not staying low. You're not staying low. You're right. You're going high. And so, and then now you you hit the hammer. Those guys have been recruiting too. And they start working on guys they're already talking to, guys they can get in, maybe new names that open up because Arkansas 
is maybe is obviously would be more attractive than the if we're talking about the three names let's start there I'm not saying it's going to land for sure be one of those but if it is Arkansas is a step up for all three from those programs it absolutely is and so that might open up a, a, other doors for those guys so there's all kinds of positive possibilities on the way if your check can land this just right and I think the goal uh is is to get it done sooner than later rather than later you don't want it to be quick and knee jerk if it's not, it, you know, it, it's got to be the right hire. And if it's if it comes across as a gamble, maybe time would tell if it paid off. I don't know how much time uh, and, and what might happen early on a more of a gamble and more of an unknown or a seeming unknown. And I don't know what that does to your fan base because again, Eric Mulsman had a, you know, he's, there's going to be some comparisons to, well, this guy's not as good as this guy, and he's, you know, even Mulsman people might say did more at Nevada. Than somebody. So you just never know. I'm just throwing out some what ifs and some different scenarios. I think it's important to consider some of that stuff. Uh, oh, okay. I'm getting coached up here. I'm, I'm explaining myself too much and defending things. Well, I mean, a lot of this stuff is raw. A lot of the stuff, the bandaid got ripped off. And yeah, I do that sometimes. I, I'm trying to explain some of the nuance that goes into this stuff and not just tell you uh, like an adult would to a child. It's just that way. Deal with it. People don't like that either. It doesn't matter how you carve it up and serve it. Someone's going to complain about it. I respect the take. We're talking about moving ahead. We're talking about the new, we've spent more time talking about some of these candidates, some of the players that could be involved, whether coming from Arkansas into the portal or considering Arkansas, maybe the silent commit, those kind of things. Spent a lot of time on that. So we are moving forward. Definitely don't want to give the impression that we're just going to live in the past. Uh, the past just became the past a few hours ago, ago, though, officially. So I think it's okay to spend a little time on it. Um, Shaka Smart, I mean, you know, Shaka Smart was a guy that Virginia Commonwealth, VCU, what it, you know, he, he, made a huge, he made huge splashes consistently on the mid-major level. You know, once he got to Texas, things didn't work out there. It just, it just wasn't a good fit. And then you wonder, is he is he able to handle it at that level? Uh, then he goes to Marquette in the Big East, which is a, you know, that is a, a high major conference. And look what he's done. I mean, he you know, so uh, he's a guy that's, you know, he, to me, he's not a flash in the pan. What, what happened at Texas um, probably gave me more concerns about his ceiling. And then I think he's answered some of that at Marquette. But I don't, I, I mean, He's a guy that you might look at if you don't have a home run uh, already lined up. And I, I'm i given three names, but I hardly doubt, I know for a fact that Eurocheck doesn't have a much more expanded list. I've got a, several more names outside the three. Now I don't share them now, not now. Uh, but but Shaka Smart, someone brought up, so I'll talk about him. He He's a guy that I think they should look at if something's not already in play. And if they don't think they can get if they move through quickly a, a top list that I've gone through where it's not going to work out, uh, whether he's in the next group or not, I won't say, but he would be one that I, I think they should look at and, and, and take a run at as far as at least measuring interest and then go from there and have conversations. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, shock is smart. Um, and and I, I've seen a lot of uh, posters on Hogville bring his name up or a few at least, but I've seen his name a few times. Um you know, someone was talking about, um, uh, you know, there there have been some people that have been throwing out Buzz Williams. I referred to him earlier, said I wanted to bring it up. Might as well. I'll just bring up his name because there are some people already like, no, no. And I, I kind of alluded to his name was around at the Mike Anderson era part. I'm going to say, I'll put it this way. To me, Arkansas's program is at a place where it should be swinging higher than that. It should be swinging higher than that. And I'm not, that's no knock. It's not, maybe it'll be taken as a knock on Buzz Williams. He's a good coach. I think Arkansas's program is, is, is at, a, at a more elevated place where they've got to start higher than that. If it comes down to there, I, I, I don't think that moves your needle for, with your fan base. I don't think it's satisfying. Uh, and that's not to say that somehow if it did happen, that he couldn't have some kind of success here that we wouldn't have projected and would be better than what he's done elsewhere. I, 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 my opinion is no. 
my opinion is no. So, um, but yeah, so I threw that one out there. 45 minutes in, it's a beautiful day. It's a, uh, I don't know what the Diamond Hogs are doing right now. I guess they're into somewhere in the game. Keep an eye on Brad Underwood. You know, and, and there's a guy that's well compensated, you know, Illinois head coach. Um, I mean, much respect for the job he's done. Look at look at Illinois this year out of the Big Ten, one of the top seeds. Um, he's done a hell of a job there. Um, what do you think, folks? Are you ready for the next era? I mean, is it, are, are, you know, there will be some people who are flat. There are people... People anticipating, anticipating with excitement. There are people that love this time of year, and whether they liked EPM or not, they just get into this stuff. And now let's go. Let's see what the next one. Let's track planes. Let's dream a little bit. What can we do? You know, there's all kinds of ways and takes on it. But the reality is, however you look at it, you're in flux right now. We're not sure. We're in no man's land. We're in purgatory. We're in, you know, where does it go now? Um, and Arkansas's brand is kind of shiny, despite last season. Based on some recent success, it reminds everybody out there who could be a candidate, you can win here. You can win big here. Um, and Arkansas, to me, is still the second best program in the SEC. We can't, you know, you can't be a complete homer and say it's better than Kentucky. Not historically. Uh, in recent years, you could argue hey, Arkansas had more success in the postseason. Um, uh, but, you know, Kentucky's the, the you know, uh, Kentucky's the measuring stick in the SEC. It's the, arguably the greatest program of all time in college basketball. But Arkansas's next, and this is a good basketball league. It's had different points in time going back even to the 90s uh, where, it's had, where it's been a strong league in the top half. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, programs that have had success at different times. Florida, for example. Uh, and so I think to say Arkansas's, the, you know, Next up after Kentucky is strong. And these last few years, when you look at the NCAA tournament, when you look at March, is what people remember the most. Arkansas did better than other teams in the league, even if it didn't do as well during league play. Um, and so I think it's made their program more attractive. And now it's like, okay, tradition, facilities, you know you can win there. NIL is so important. It's a game changer. And it changes what traditional – powers look like it could it could it could elevate and raise some programs that you wouldn't think are basketball schools just because they have people that are willing to kick it in uh and, and can maybe level some things that was what it's always been talked about as possibly doing arkansas can't afford to fall low it can't afford to slide um and it has some and so they got to pick it back up and it's important to get that figured out as much as possible now and get it raised to make this next hire. It's not going to just be how much you pay a guy and, 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 and how you can put together the money to get the buyout right, get the buyout money. You got to get that NIL right. You got to make that happen. Beard or bust? Somebody's puking out of their mouths makes you sick? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, not everybody's going to like the same coaching names, right? Even some of the bigger ones that you know, there will be people that have their reasons. Some of these guys have some baggage. I went through it. Hogs are trailing 2 nothing, top of the fourth. Steve Alford, second choice. Rick Patino. Rick or Rick Richard, his son? Yeah, I mean, you're going to have, you're, you know, there'll be battle of the, you know, if you're a Game of Thrones fans, if you're Game of Thrones fans, you remember Battle, Battle of the Bostons. Sorry, I, I don't know why I was trying to be funny with that. But, yeah, you'll have Battle of Fans talking about this cut. It's part of what the fun is. For some, it's stressful. They don't want they, you know, want to just tell me when it's over. There'll be some that are tracking every little thing. Some of this back and forth on coaches. And there's some valid points when you bring up strengths and weaknesses of everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm saying things that are obvious, Captain Obvious, but... Part of that's fun, you know, some of that's, in, 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 you know, that's that's part of the fun. And at the end of the day, when the hire's announced, that's where the rubber meets the road in terms of perception moving forward. Because it, even, even if you like the hire, it's not a guarantee of good results after that once you start playing games, recruiting, and all that.
but you want to win the higher announcement. You want to win, you want good optics with that. Your optics with videos and timing, and this was going to move along pretty quickly. So far, building up expectations. Our athletic director, Hunter Yurichek, you're putting out cute little videos and you're, 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 you know, you're drawing a line and you're saying, here was our position here. This guy's on his way out. Let's help, help him to the door. You better now back it up with a hire. You don't want your fan base thinking that somebody just left that's better than what you just brought in. Um, and so you got to get it. You, you got to go. You got to. That's why I say, you know, no, no disparaging certain names, but I, we talked about one just a minute ago on Buzz Williams. I think you got to go bigger and stronger than that. And I, and I think you need to try to land that. Um, and so, again, you know, kind of going back through and winding back around, this is a, an exciting time uh, here in March Madness. If you don't have a team went, that ran deep into it for the first time in three years or in four years, I guess, because you count this one. And certainly Arkansas hasn't made it to the final weekend. Uh, you have to go back to Nuller Richardson in the 90s. Um, but but you're, you're still in March Madness. The tournament's about to end. It's a, there's a lot of excitement right now on the possibilities. And so uh, I, for one, am really, really looking forward to it. I'm, I'm on the phone all day long, texting, on phone calls, getting information. Uh, you know, and it's, 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 what I, it's what I really like about this is what I'm trying to say. It's what I really enjoy uh, because then, then I'm trying to process everything, break it down, figure out what's right, and then get, and then get, get on the right path and zero in on it. Uh, and so for me, it's exciting as a fan, you know, again, I think it's, you know, uh, whatever floats your boat, but for me, I'm, I'm not telling you to be excited about it, but I am someone throw in Daryl Walker, Kelvin Sampson, please stop referencing Wikipedia. I was just reading some of the comments, uh, fans do that stuff. You know, they go in there, you can change things and they do some interesting things. If it's Jerome Tang, you're done. I bet you won't be done, but you might. Billy Donovan. I think I think Hunter Yurichek has a great responsibility now. You know, all eyes are on him. They're no longer on the other guy. All eyes are on Hunter Yurichek. How does he, you know, how does he land this? How will it come off? How does he deliver it? When does he deliver it? And, and, and the sooner the better if it's the right guy. The sooner the better just to get it done and it's not the right guy and the fans smell it, know it, sense it, then you're going to have a hard time. You're going to have a hard time moving forward and then, and then you better hope for the best. You don't want to be in a situation where you're thinking, okay, I'm going to do this and then I've got to hope for the best. You want to go into it again. I said soaring, confident, knowing you just that you just went and got a stud, a proven stud, and somebody that's got low, low risk, and a very you know you don't want a high floor guy. You want a guy that you know the ceiling's high, um, and, and and then the floor would also be high. But you're, you're not even want to think about that. You want to talk about that high ceiling. Uh, Nick Cronin. Someone else said Will Wade. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of names out there um, that fans are familiar with. <laughs> so look, you know, Chris Beard, I've said this. I've talked about it here. I've talked about it before. I've put it on hogville.net. Chris Beard is a guy that I've told over and over again has real interest in Arkansas, has real interest in Arkansas. And this goes back, these coaches know what's out there. They know they're hearing the same things I was getting, that that, that the head coach at, at the University of Arkansas, Eric Patrick Melsman, was hard looking for months. So these things are turning. And so, yeah, an extension's announced at Ole Miss, but you have to do that until you know, you, you, you know, that's just part of the game. It happens all the time. That doesn't mean they're not interested. That doesn't mean they're ready to move on. Arkansas is an upgrade over Ole Miss in, in college basketball. Texas Tech was an upgrade over UNLV where 
Chris Beard left and had a cup of coffee and then changed over to Texas Tech. That was an upgrade. That was an upgrade. And so here's a guy that's not bashful about going and getting what he wants. We'll see how much he wants the Arkansas job. We'll see how much, you know, how realistic are the money demands or what the what the reality of the buyouts and this and that and plus the NIL, can they get there? Uh, but I, I think he's number one and you start there, probably has started there. I'm just, it has started there. Um, and whether it's still there or down somewhere else because it couldn't be worked out, we'll find out. But I continue to hear positives about it. Uh, and I just can't lock it down to say more about it. What's the difference between Arkansas basketball versus Ole Miss? Man, somebody really asking me that? Have you paid attention? I'm not, look, dog and Ole Miss, uh, you know, I mean, uh, basketball program's nowhere near what Arkansas's been. Not, not historically, not recently, not, you know, it's not even close. NIL is a game changer. NIL replaces things like, I like your brand. I'm, I'm fixated on the success I can have here because you've done it before. I'll get it more exposure. I'll get more development. NIL is going to supplant a lot of other things that matter, building relationships, you know, those kind of things. It's not that you throw them completely out the window. It's just there's a different pegging order, and NIL is going to be up there at the top for most. And so, but as a program, in a basketball program, Arkansas is a move up <laughs> over an Ole Miss. Someone was saying they'd rather coach at UNLV. I mean, Texas Tech was also familiar to Beard, right? Assistant coach. Texas guy. Went to Texas. University of Texas. That was a dream job. That didn't work out. Um, you know, again, I'm intrigued by some of these names at the top for obvious reasons. So we're going to get to an hour, and I'm going to sign off 57 minutes in. Uh, I want to thank everybody again who's been joining me these last few days. I uh, appreciate that. I know I'm interfering with the baseball game tonight, but who cares? People that want to tune into that and watch this later, great. If you're here with me now, thank you. Uh, if you're able to juggle, I don't have the TV on tonight because I didn't want to get distracted like I did last night to keep an eye on that baseball game. So I'll jump into it because I knew it'd still be going on probably middle of the way by the time I got off here or close to it. Thank you. Appreciate. I appreciate you too. Thank you. Uh, uh, these comments go so fast, you know, I have a hard time with it. You know, I think it's interesting too, when I, we, you know, I'll wrap up with this. When I think about the athletic director, their success is measured by their hires, their ability to raise funds, get people behind. And NIL now, you know, they've got a captain all these different things. And so they're measured by those things. And so their, their moments, it's almost like special teams. You know, special teams, they don't dominate the game of football in terms of how much they're on the field. Uh, but they can really shift things. One play in special teams can really shift things um, one way or the no another, field position, the scoreboard, whatever. Uh, and I think an, an, an athletic director is like that because the coaches of the various sports are the ones that you're really paying attention to, game in and game out, year in and year out. But it's that athletic director's job to, to get it right when there has to be a change. And it's kind of like a special teams moment. The, to me, I said it before, I'm going to say it again. Hunter Juracek, I don't think, I think people got excited about Bobby Petrino. That's a, that, that, that charge folks up. Um, but, but that's got some interesting dynamics moving forward that, that uh, can, can come back and bite you. Uh, or may not be, might, may not land like you'd hope it would, but at least, and energize the fan base over a sagging football uh, program. Again, basketball hasn't been sagging except for one year with a great success three years prior. Um, and so this is a different dynamic coming off of some, you know, kerfuffling and how football situations handled. Hunter, your tech needs this to be a, not a, you know, a big win, something that gives everybody confidence, restores confidence, and you feel like you're not taking a step back. And you only have to question that. All right, so we've got a few more seconds to get to an hour. I wanted to do that. I want to thank everybody for joining me. As, as I get updates on the coaching stuff, 
I'm going to jump in here. We're going to we're going to keep it moving. I want to thank everybody for joining me tonight. We'll sign off with the big headline: Eric Patrick Melsman officially to Southern California. We saw it coming, and now it's the coaching search at Arkansas. Arkansas is the big opening out there in college basketball as we get through the Final Four weekend. We'll see what other dominoes fall. We'll see if the top three names we've talked about over and over again, how that plays out and how it does it seep into some other stuff. Um, but as I sign off tonight, remember one thing, process and results, two different things. Shoot the messenger, if you will, but I'm having a lot of fun with this. And I know a lot of people, all they want is to see the success for the Arkansas Razorbacks, whether they like how information is delivered to them or not. So I also keep that in mind and go on with a smile. Thank you. See you soon. Until then, I'll see you then.